My name is Laurel Deva Austin, and I am a senior illustrator in the Anvil. Well, I've been painting since I was very, very young, and early on, you know, you have the paper and crayons and, and all that stuff, but I got my first um, copy of Adobe Photoshop when I was about 12 years old, and a little cheap tablet that I could paint on. So I've been doing both digital and traditional artwork for a very long time. When creating paintings for this project, it's, uh, it's a bit of a unique challenge compared to the other stuff I've done in the past, which has been creating single images for single purposes and trying to tell a large story within one image. This project is more about telling small stories in single images and then building them all up into a sequence. It's very important that each individual painting I do tells its own individual little story. If one moment doesn't work, then the entire story can fall apart. I admire your spirit, but I will break it. The trick with this project was finding a hybrid between illustration and animation. It's never going to be fully animated, and it's not still images. The trick is to be very selective about what you choose to move and what you don't, um, so that people are expecting something closer to a still image, so that if it moves a little bit, it feels really special. Warcraft has always really been about sort of big, epic, bulky shapes and big, splashy color and all sorts of, just everything is, is over the top, which is, um, sort of, is definitely no exception in this project, but we wanted to really go a lot darker and grittier uh, to really sell how much of a, of a difficult place Draenor is to be. So when we were doing this, we wanted to really push the anatomy of the characters in a, into a, a more realistic space than they normally are seen. <laughs> doing the Hellscream episode, it was a really steep learning curve when we first set out to do it because it was on that episode that I was really sort of figuring out how to draw these orcs for this project. What does an emaciated orc look like? They're sort of human shaped, but not, not exactly. They're these big, enormous, bulky guys. And when they're reduced down to this totally skinny, practically dying state, what does that look like in an orc? We ended up making the choice to keep the ribcage really big, like it's a big hulking guy in there, but he's just, you know, he's just wasted away. So his bones are really large, but, but he himself is no longer. When I'm handed a shot by the director, it's usually gone through both the storyboard artist and the director, and they've set out pretty much exactly what needs to happen in any given shot and what the basic composition of the shot is. When I get it, what I have to do is to translate our sort of final character designs into the shot along with the environments and the lighting and the mood and really, really kind of clinch the, the acting and the motion and whatever the characters are doing or feeling in that, in that moment. My favorite shot from Kargath is the one where he's just been thrown the sword by the ogre and he knows this sword is it's a piece of crap sword. The, the ogre wants him to die, and Karga absolutely hates this ogre, and trying just to communicate that sort of, like, vile hatred in, in one gaze is a really fun thing to do. Hopefully it just punctuates that moment and exactly what Kargath is thinking in that moment. We're still right in the middle of this project, so I'm just looking forward to what the motion story guys do with the paintings. It's always really exciting to see them and their take on the painting and how it ends up coming out in the end. They have just been totally knocking it out of the park with the motion, and it just looks fantastic, so I'm really excited to see what comes up next. Oh.